if you never hear from the Magic Woolies again, we love you guys. Good morning, Woolies. Are we having a nice breakfast before we get going? Looking out over the lake. Tell Daddy what you guys saw right outside the window. Dead bird. A dead bird. You want me to come see it? Okay. Just like you can see it. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Dead bird. What dead bird? He probably flew into the glass. It's kind of funny. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Okay, we're stopping for lunch at 12.50, well, 1 o'clock, and we have gone, we're at 61.2 miles, trip time of 32.32. Temperature is reading 44 degrees right now as well. So we started out around 37, now it's 44. Okay, we had to take a brief, supposedly brief, jaunt back to the hotel so I could pick up some better socks. Uh, looks like a Piper got some ice cream for this portion of the trail and she took a little bit of a nap and uh, looks like I've got a weird blood blister subcutaneously type thing um, so we're getting ready to go again at least I don't have flesh eating bacteria yet it's 356 and we're gonna get back on the trail after we get ready to go here Crystal, what are you having for a treat for the second section of the trail? Ice cream and a cone. Ice cream and a cone. Although that looks more like a milkshake now. How is it, Piper? Is it yummy? Look at Daddy Piper. Mm -hmm. oh. <laughs> All right. Now that looks like a great setting for a haunted house or something. Lightning rods on it, obviously abandoned. On the edge of a farm that all the buildings have been abandoned. But we're okay because we're just out here in the sunshine, hiking along the road. Right, Bristol? She nodded her head. Okay, we're making the turn on the Sleepy Hollow Road. If you never hear from the Magic Woolies again, we love you guys. And I'm not going down without a fight. Look at the intrepid explorer, Sabretooth, climbing the hill, using all her wiles to get up to the top. And when she's up there, she's gonna say, Daddy, help me down, I can't get down. Bristol climbed up to the top, and now she's up there. She's probably gonna say, Daddy, help me. I can't get down. Whoa! <laughs>
Yeah, that's not going to go back up there. Bristle that will break, just like it broke off in your hand. See? you over most of the others running. Boom! That's an Moving up on Sleepy Hollow Acres here. We got a saddle out front. Bristol, you want to go ride it real quick? Yeah. Go ahead. Piper. Two ponies. Two ponies. Take them. Take them. There they are. They know their names. Hey. Chocolate vanilla. One Chocolate vanilla. Here they come. Oh, they are. They're trotting over to see you, girls. Hi, Hi Shimmer and Shine. <laughs> Hi, Bristle and Piper. Hi, Oreo and Vanilla. Hi, Aurora and Tangled. Hi. I saw you. I see something up there. Is it looking at us? Keep going, Piper. I can't tell. Oh, fake out with a ribbon. Okay. That's pretty cool. We only have about two more miles to go to get to the van. The girls are still probably managing close to three miles an hour. I'm doing about 2.6, 2.7, somewhere in there. They're doing better than I am. But I'm just limping along here, alongside a big farm at this point, like an industrial farm. And my foot's getting worse. And I gotta tell you, I may or may not have considered saying this is it for me already, or shuttling them on ahead and me come up a another time and do it after my foot heals to catch up to them. But I'm still going. I dread what I'm gonna find when I stop for the night and take off my shoe and sock. <laughs> Cause it is hurting pretty bad. But we always just keep trucking on, keep going. Just keep hiking, just keep hiking. The good news is, girls, we have less than two miles to go. Should be about one eight. Might be able to see the car going that ridge. Maybe. Should be about one, 1 1.8 miles or so. You were thinking hearing lots of frogs back there in that wetland. I don't know if there's a little bit of a creek or if it's just marsh and swampy land that's uh, caused by the snow melt. And it looks like there might be a little bit of a creek. It's really pretty loud back there. Just came over the hill a little flooded area here. Just alive with frogs and birds and stuff. Want to see a frog. Okay. Yeah. 
really still can saw our shadow from across. So look right ahead there. This whole thing is just filled with frogs. Yep. About four inches long frogs. Like when they extend out four to six inches. I saw a wrinkle. Yep. But I have not seen that. I know, but I'm trying to make them jump from underneath. Right? They have a birdhouse that looks like a hole. Yeah. That's pretty cool. This definitely has a lot of birdhouses all over. Almost every available spot. Oop. I think we're going to the bathroom again. Where's that mommy? I can't tell. Someone's going. That's a pretty cool farmhouse though, isn't it? Yeah. It looks like a mansion. It kind of does. Or like the beast castle with all the vines growing on it. Yeah, the beast castle from Beauty and the Beast? Yeah. I bet that's real pretty when everything starts growing and there's flowers and leaves all across the house. That's pretty cool. That's probably what I because I see it. Rustic Road. Muskrat Road. Everywhere there's signs of glaciation, whether you recognize the landforms or not. But giant boulders that came from way up north, perhaps worn off giant mountains sitting in a field or whatever sun's starting to get lower on the horizon maybe an hour left or so max of sunlight or of light i should say sun will probably be down about uh, half hour 40 minutes maybe using the finger method um I'm barely managing to limp along at about two miles an hour, 1.9-ish. I'm not even stopping when they stop to go to the bathroom or anything because I just gotta keep moving. Otherwise I'll fall way behind, which I already am. I don't know, this might be it and then maybe Nicole gets her wish after all, which is me driving as a support role. And her and the girls just doing it. <clears throat> Every once in a while, step on a rock or something and it just sends a wave of pain on my foot. I can't even catch my breath. But <sighs> sun's going down in this pretty nice secluded area. It's the Millennium Falcon up ahead. And it looks like the winery's closed, unfortunately. Because I could use a drink. Or a bottle. Or maybe a cask. Say magic woolies. Magic woolies. Hey, we're in the car. You guys ready to go two more miles? No. <laughs> no, me either. Okay, in time, 6.48 p.m. of our second leg. Uh, it should be 10 miles exactly, give or take a tenth of a mile or so. But I don't know because I'm an idiot and I left the GPS on in the back again. Little doggies! And it's in the back of the van so I can't get it. Bristol side! You know, it's not as, uh, it's kind of anticlimactic to come back to the other vehicle after getting to the vehicle <laughs> oh, that we just like to. Black cat. Well, we just had to cross a black cat path. Wait, what is that? 
Well, black cat crosses your path. That's okay. supposed to be bad luck. All right. Well, it was sitting perfectly still, laying in the sun. Alpaca to air apparel. Okay. Can we go there? Here we go. Honey, I don't think they're gonna be open. Be cool coming over the hill and into uh, Manitowoc here, and pretty cool to see the lake with the long sun glow hang hanging over it. And of course, all the construction leading in. But lake sure looks pretty. giant blister with a blood blister on top of it. Oh yeah, that's a healthy one. Okay, so the Headless Horseman. Mm -hmm. It's a legend from the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And Sleepy Hollow was a Dutch settlement mm -hmm. where... What is a legend? A legend is like a myth or a story that's been told over and over again and maybe like exaggerated. Kind of like a make-believe one. Sometimes it's got some bearing in truth some start in truth. And so it was a Dutch settlement mm -hmm. and it was a little uh, town or a little area called Sleepy Hollow. And it was said that a lot of things were spooky there. So during the Civil War, for example, there were, or the Revolutionary War, there were lots of people that were killed there for lots of different reasons so like a british spy was supposedly killed there and his ghost haunted a tree and just all kinds of things <clears throat> there was a school teacher that came out and i think from pennsylvania i could be wrong somewhere in new england maybe and he was kind of a scaredy cat and that means what viper if you're a scaredy cat, what does that mean? You're scared of something. You're scared of lots of things, right? Mm -hmm. And so he heard all these myths and legends and he was scared of lots of them. But he met a girl in Sleepy Hollow that was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. And her father was very rich. He owned a lot of the land and farmed it and stuff. And he had lots and lots of money. And so... He wanted to marry the daughter, marry the girl. But mommy was right when she told you earlier that there was a younger man that was big and strong and handsome, and he wanted to marry the girl too. Well, one night, the daughter's father was having a big party at his farm. And so Ichabod Crane, the school teacher rode over on a plow horse that he had bought very cheaply. And he rode over and he planned on proposing to her, asking her to what? Marry him. Marry him, that's right. That's what her proposal is. And so he rode over there, but things didn't quite go as he planned for whatever reason, and I don't remember the reason. And so he started riding home. Well, when he got to a crossroads, there was a man on horseback, a big man, bigger than normal, bigger than daddy. 
and he was wearing a cloak. And Ichabod Crane, a cloak is like a, a cape almost, but it, it, it used to be big and heavy and it would wrap around you and keep you warm and keep the rain off you and stuff. And so uh, he noticed there was something else weird about the guy, the horseman. Not only was he big and strong, bigger than any man supposedly, but his head wasn't on his shoulders. It was sitting on his saddle in front of him. That's why they called him the Headless Horseman. And Ichabod Crane got scared after he rode with the guy for a little bit and noticed this. And so he took off as fast as his old plow horse could carry him, dashing through the, the streets and stuff, which weren't streets at that time. They were lanes that were just dirt roads. And went dashing through, riding through, and he was trying to get to a graveyard by a bridge, which supposedly is where this horseman, who was a Hessian who had been killed in a battle when a cannonball blew his head right off. And so that's where supposedly where the Hessian was buried. And so he was trying to get to that graveyard because if he got past it, legend said, the horseman wouldn't chase him anymore. And so he rode as fast as he could to get to that graveyard. And he rode past it and rode over the bridge. But the legends were wrong. And the horseman followed him. And he couldn't run anymore. He was tired. And the horseman grabbed his head up off the saddle in front of him. And threw it as hard as he could. And it hit Ichabod Crane in the head and knocked him off his horse. And legends say that he was never seen again. And so they don't know if he left because he was so scared that he decided never to stay in Sleepy Hollow again. Or if maybe the Headless Horseman took him and dragged him away. All they found was his old plow horse, which was very tired from running, and a smashed pumpkin. That's the legend of Sleepy Hollow. That was a Disney story. No, but well, Disney did do a, a version of it. A rendition. Yeah. Okay, so we're looking at thirty-six, thirty-four for trip time, which could be wrong because I left the GPS on when we were driving back to the hotel, and time is a hundred and five miles. I'd say we got that wrong. Mommy's doing first aid on Piper for her accident that she did just before we left. And Piper's got her thumb in her blankie, so she's happy.